Okay, so the topic I'll be covering in this video is internal boundaries, which also includes self-care and self-regulation. So I want you to think about internal boundaries basically as how you relate to yourself. So much of the time when we think about boundaries, we're thinking about how do we relate to others. Before we can even get to that, you need to get really clear about how you are relating to yourself. So I want you to think of internal boundaries like your level of self-discipline, let's say, or healthy time management, management of your thoughts, management of your emotions, which involves self-regulation, management of your own behaviors, your impulses. So if you are procrastinating a lot, not doing things that you know you should be doing that kind of get you in trouble, or you're doing a lot of things that you really have no interest in doing, but you feel like you have to say yes to them or someone else wants you to do it, or let's say you're overdoing. Are you over-delivering or over-functioning in your relationships? Doing more than your share? doing things that people can and should be doing for themselves, look at your self-care, because this is directly related to your self-care. Do you get enough rest? Do you have time when you're not working? If and when you are able, do you eat relatively healthy food? Like, what are you fueling your body with? Are you taking care of yourself emotionally? Meaning, giving yourself a break not always ruminating about problems or having the circular thinking. Negative thoughts and rumination and negative self-talk, mastering that is a big part of having healthy internal boundaries. So this also helps us as we strengthen our internal boundaries, again, our relationship to ourself, how we relate to ourselves. We get so much better at following through on the things that we want to do, setting goals, and actually being able to follow through on the steps that we need to take to take those goals from like a dream to an actual reality. All of this has to do with your internal boundaries. So let's talk a little bit about negative self-talk, because I know from the survey that you all did that a lot of you have a really rough inner mean committee who is constantly talking shit about you, feeling like what you're doing is not good enough, feeling like your effort isn't good enough, or doing a lot of the compare and despair, which we'll get to more when I get to the topic of social media and tech. But even right now, if in your own mind, when you are with friends, if you are with siblings, whomever it is, if you're always comparing yourself and not really measuring up, or thinking of ways that you are not good enough or not valuable enough, that is an internal boundary issue. So one of the first things that we're going to do in this process is get really dialed into what is that inner dialogue, right? Do you, we all have like this running sort of narrative in our mind, whether we realize it or not, and it's really important to dial in and understand what is the content of that inner narrative when it comes to you. Because internal boundaries become the foundation for real self-care and real self-love. And when you really think about it, the relationship that you have with yourself is the most important relationship you'll ever have in your life with anyone. And it actually sets the bar for every other relationship in your life. So if you talk badly about yourself to other people, to yourself, if you're putting yourself down, sort of not to threaten others sometimes, or putting yourself down before others can do it, this is projecting, right? You are literally announcing to the world that you have low self-esteem or a low opinion of yourself. So what happens when we have a low opinion of ourselves? We inevitably attract other people who agree with that low opinion. So this is a really important part of the process of understanding 
how to put healthy boundaries in place in other areas of your life. But we all, everything that I'll be teaching you starts and ends with you because you are the common denominator in your life experience. It is so tempting to think that life is happening to us, right? As if we're the little boat and life is the huge storm just knocking us around. When you become masterful at boundaries, when you start working on this, you'll realize that you have the power to become the storm in your life, right? You have the power to dictate which way the winds blow, which way your career goes, which way your relationships go, by asserting yourself, by knowing yourself, and first and foremost, by loving yourself. Becoming someone who you believe is worthy of all of the things that you want in this life, because you are absolutely worthy right now in this moment with no changes, just by virtue of being alive. You are worthy of care, respect, love, of having your your needs, your wants, your desires fulfilled. And I think that a lot of times we go through this process and believe that if I get to this level of success or if I do these things, whatever they may be, then I'll be worthy. But that's a perfectionist mindset. And it also reeks of lack of self-esteem. So right now, we're all agreeing. Just by virtue of you being alive, you are worthy of healthy love and an amazing life. So Strong internal boundaries means that you can show up for yourself. It means that you have the capacity to self-soothe, right? And this has to do with emotional self-regulation. A lot of times, if we were raised in a family system where nobody taught us how to handle our emotions, where our maternal or paternal impactors, right, the adults in our life, if they didn't know how to manage their emotions, if they got really activated over things and got really mad and yelled or withdrew in anger or whatever, I mean, we all had different models of behavior that we learned and that we saw in our lives. If you had a parent who couldn't soothe you so that you were sort of left with your own emotions but not knowing, right? Think about a parent. If a parent can come, if you're crying as a child and a parent can come and soothe you, you feel released. There, there's, there's a relief in having an actual adult help you regulate your emotions. But many of us didn't get that. And not to worry, because we can learn how to do it in adulthood, right? This is what mental health is about. So it's really important. And I'm going to be giving you some things so that you can figure out some self-soothing things. Because when you get on down to it, internal boundaries... What we're really saying is that we are accountable for our own feelings and our own actions. And when you have healthy internal boundaries, you know that it's not someone else's fault. Even if people do things that piss us off, that hurt our feelings, we have a right to the way that we respond and and how we feel about those things. But the blaming others either for what is or isn't happening in our life. That isn't what we do if we want to actually get where we want to go. That is not emotionally healthy to blame others. The same way we become responsible and are responsible for our own feelings and our own actions, we expect that others are responsible so we don't feel overtly guilty about everything, because that can also be a problem with internal boundaries, is having excessive guilt. So when it comes to the self-care portion of internal boundaries and boundaries in general, I've actually created a bonus self-care section. So you have self-care ideas there, a daily checklist, and resources to make it really, really easy. But I am going to inspire you to think about 
how your self-care actually is. Because I'm not just talking about an occasional, you know, mud mask at home. I'm really talking about caring for yourself the way that you would care for a child that you love. Resting. Breathing. Creating stillness and silence on a regular basis. We need that space. And meditation, breathing, energy work, and those are all the resources that I'm sharing with you to make it easy. So this is now what you're going to do. It's called top of mind. That's the next thing, which this is something that I'm giving you to raise your awareness in every topic that I'm covering. I'm going to give you a top of mind. So in the awareness raising portion of the internal boundaries, I want you to, for the next 48 hours, you're going to completely dial into how you talk about yourself to others and how you are talking to yourself when no one's around. So we're basically getting an assessment for the next 48 hours of what that inner mean committee might be saying. Because literally information about you is power to transform, which is what it's all about. Then in the go deeper, this is questions that I have for you where we're going to dive a little bit deeper so that we can figure out your internal boundaries. Where are they right now? Right? How often do you proclaim that you're going to change unhealthy habits and then not follow through? That's an example of one of the questions. So you'll find that in the go deeper section of this topic. And then you're going to choose three or four that really resonated with you. And you're going to journal about them. Just write a little bit more because that is really tapping into what is happening for you. And again, raising your awareness about anything is the first step to being able to change it, because obviously we cannot change what we're either in denial of or what we do not consciously know, because a lot of this stuff is in your unconscious mind. And then the last thing for this topic is I'm going to ask you to take action, right? How about get some skin in the game? We got to do something different. You want something different? We got to do something different. So for the next week, I'm going to ask you every single day for seven days to choose something that I've provided for you that will create more stillness and silence and expansion in your internal experience. Could be meditation, could be one of Lara's energy exercises, could be using a breathing app. Whatever it is that feels good to you, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. But I want you to commit for at least seven days. And then I want you to see how your experience changes. Okay, so that is going to wrap it up for this topic of internal boundaries. Now it is time for you to go get to work.